Good day everyone. Welcome to our online worship service. It's another Sunday that we gather together as a church community, an opportunity to worship God. And if this is your first time to be here, welcome po sa inyo. We hope to connect with you, so please message us in our Facebook page or scan the QR code right on your screen. And before we worship God, basahin ko po sa atin Psalm 150. Let's read the whole psalm. And it says here, Praise the Lord, praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with, tr with the trumpet sound. Praise Him with lute and harp. Praise Him with tambourine and dance. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with sounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is a great example of a joyful worship unto God. And let it be a joyful worship unto God that we have right now. Even though we don't have trumpets, cymbals, or lyre, but we have hearts that would give honor and praise unto our God. So Lord, be honored at this time of worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. into my battles You speak your purpose in the panic ends. Your glory shining like the morning How could I deserve a love like this? I'm trusting you I'm laying down the lies Open up my eyes Letting you change everything When I give up you give me life unknown Now I'm not my own Letting you Change everything My heart has become your throne Almighty, nothing comes close My soul is saved within my Savior There's no other love that's greater My heart has become your throne Almighty, nothing comes close My soul is saved within my Savior there's no other love that's greater In my weakness How could I deserve a love like this? Breathing life You're breathing life into my battles You speak your purpose in the panic ends Your glory shining like the morning How could I deserve a love like this? How could I deserve a love like this? I'm just in you I'm laying down the Open up my eyes, letting you change everything When I give up, you give me life unknown Now I'm not my own, letting you change everything My heart has become your throne Almighty, nothing comes close My soul is safe within my Savior There's no other love that's greater Become your throne, Almighty. 
a high, your ways are high, your love is deeper, your love is deeper, your plans are greater, your plans are greater, I'll trust you, I'll trust you, your ways are high, your ways are higher, your love is deeper, your love is deeper, your plans are greater, your plans are greater, I'll trust you.
Sabay-sabay po tayo. I'm no longer what I used to be. I am stronger because you Thank you, Jesus, that indeed you have given us beauty for our ashes. In light of our unfaithfulness, you gave us your faithfulness. In light of our imperfections, you gave us your perfect love. We were hopeless people, but because of the gospel, because of your sacrifice, we now have a forgiven life, a changed life, and a life being renewed day to day and a life that can trust and hope in you for eternity. We praise you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. And as we partake communion right now, would you please get ready with your communion elements? And let me read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. And now it says here, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as, often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. At this time of communion, May we focus our hearts toward God, remembering Him, praising Him for the great sacrifice and perfect love that has truly transformed our lives and that is truly transforming our lives continually and a perfect love and sacrifice that has brought us security of being with Him for eternity. Lord Jesus, thank You because You love us so much that you gave your life for us. You gave your body as a sacrifice for our own sins. You gave your blood as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins so that today we enjoy this reconciled relationship with you, rela relationship with the Father that has truly brought us joy, hope, and peace and that would, us, that would bring us home with you in eternity. We honor you at this time of communion together as a church in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's eat the bread together. Let's drink from the cup together. We praise you, Jesus. And at this time, we're going to be praying to Jesus. I believe that you trust Him, that we trust Him as a church. And we're going to be flashing prayer points for all of us 
take time to gather your families or anyone that you are at home with or kung mag-isa ka, that's gonna be fine. But the important thing is this, that we put our faith in Jesus together. As we pray for the nations, be in faith that God would do great things in light of the pandemic. Would you start praying right now? Would you agree with me in prayer? Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the hope of the world and you are the Lord over all nations. You being the creator of heaven and earth, we ask for you for wisdom so that we would be continually creative with compassion to preach the gospel and disciple the nations. We believe that with your great power, you would continue to protect and provide for your people in their families all over the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our mission stays the same in light of the pandemic. Honoring God, making disciples, and bringing the gospel to the nations of the world. And it won't be possible apart from your partnership in prayers and partnership through our cross-cultural missionaries. Maraming salamat po. Continue to make a difference by sending our missionaries into the mission field. And as we give today, let me read in Psalm chapter 105, verses 1 to 3. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim His greatness. Let the whole world know what He has done. Sing to Him, yes, sing His praises. Tell everyone about His, his wonderful deeds. Exalt in His holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Giving our tithes and offering is our worship unto our Lord, the one who has faithfully and generously provided and entrusted us with everything that we have, we worship Him at this time. Lord God, thank You for faithfully and generously providing and entrusting us with what we have today. Let this worship, let this time of giving be worship unto You. Let our lives be pleasing unto You as we put our faith and trust in You and our gratefulness to You at this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Here are ways kung paano po tayo makakapagbigay and we have a video right here to instruct us of how.
That's good news for all of us. You may choose to give via credit card, debit card, or GCash. And through our new partnership with PayMaya, you can have an acknowledgement receipt with your giving online. You may also visit everynation.org.ph slash give if you would like to give to missions. Again, everynation.org.ph slash give if you would like to give to missions. If you prefer to give your Tyson offering via offering envelope, pwede pwede pa rin po. Feel free to drop by in our foyer in Victory Metro East. Um, in Robinson's Metro East, we can drop your Tyson offering. It is open every Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Just a reminder na mag, mag mask po tayo and practice social distancing when we are there as, we, as our team is also there para po mag-assist sa atin sa pagbibigay natin ng ating tithes and offering. If you, need with, with, if you need help with your giving, please send us a message here on Facebook or through these mobile numbers on your screen. May the Lord continue to show His faithfulness and kindness to you and your family as you trust Him with your giving right now. And let us respond in worship to God as we listen to the preaching of His Word. Hello everyone and welcome to our online worship service here in Victory Metro East. We're so glad that you are able to join us today. Now let us continue on with our series, The Gospel Explained. It is our hope that you will have a clear understanding of the power of the Gospel at maintindihan po natin yung implication po nito sa ating mga buhay as we study the book of Romans. So, let us go right ahead in reading our text for today in Romans chapter 6, verses 15 to 18. Basahin po natin. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin which leads to death or of obedience which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. Let us pray. Lord, we commit to you the preaching of your word. Holy Spirit, enable us to grasp and understand the power of the gospel in our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, last week, natutunan po natin that the reason we must not continue in sin is that we are dead to sin. And di lang mga believers, uh, di lang po tayo pinalaya from the slavery of sin, but also from the power of sin as well. Sinabi rin po natin that sin no longer holds any authority over us. Therefore, wag na po natin i-allow yung sin to reign in our bodies. Kasi nga naman, how can someone who is dead continue to live in sin? And we are not only dead to sin, but because of the resurrection of Christ, we are made alive with Christ so that we will be able to walk in newness of life. So, ibig sabihin po nito, uh, if we have truly encountered the grace of God, you know, we can experience a changed life. Now, let me ask you this question. How many of you can say that your life has changed when you learned how to ride a bike? You know, marami po nagsasabi that riding a bike is not as a non-essential skill. Uh, but I beg to disagree because uh, riding a bike gave me confidence to overcome my fears and to be persistent kahit na ilang beses pa akong sumimpla. Kahit mga bike riders from all walks of life experience a sense of freedom while riding their bike. Whether they are racing, going to work, traveling, or simply doing or going around uh, the neighborhood. Naalala niyo pa po ba nung una kayong natuto magbisikleta? You know, majority of people learn how to ride a bike at a young age. Uh, ako po natuto po ako magbisikleta when I was 6 or 7 years old. And some learned when they were already adults and some never learned at all. But nevertheless, when we were learning how to ride a bike, uh, we first learned how to balance on the wheels and pedal down the street. Uh, pero isa po sa mga... Uh, struggles po natin nung nagsisimula tayo mag-bike is paano huminto. You know, the only way we know how to stop is to run into something. Eh, hindi ko po alam po na experience nyo na po bumangga sa gate ng bahay nyo or sa gate ng kapitbahay, sa mga puno o kaya naman tumilapon sa sidewalk. 
So the only way we are able to stop is to run into things and get hurt in the process. But there's another way to stop aside from running into things. A provision has been made so that we can stop the bicycle without crashing and injuring ourselves. Ang kailangan lang po natin gawin is to press the brakes gently. And it is not enough for us that we know the bike has brakes. Uh, what we do need is to actually do it kapag oras na or dapat na tayo huminto. What good does it do to have a bicycle na mayroong provision for stopping pero hindi po natin ginagamit? We might as well uh, not have any brakes at all. Pero kapag natuto na po tayo gumamit ng preno, eventually all this will become second nature to us. So what does this have to do with our message for today? Uh, you know the question the Apostle Paul raises in the passage that we have read. Sabi niya ron, are we to sin because we are not we are not under law but under grace? Paul was actually referring to believers who continue to live in sin as a lifestyle. Kumbaga, they were saying, if we are saved apart from works, then uh, we have no obligation to obey the law now that we are Christians. Naniniwala sila that they can simply live however they want. But what good is it to be set free by, uh, from sin by Jesus and walk in newness of life if we ignore to press the brakes and continue to live in sin as though we were slaves to sin. And this is a practical problem every Christian is wrestling with. And maybe uh, this is where some of you are today. Alam mo that you have been freed from the penalty of sin dahil sa grasya ng Panginoon. But when you are faced with sinful hazards that will derail your relationship with God, nagstruggle ka ngayon to put on the brakes to avoid crashing into sin and making you a slave uh, once again. But when we choose to hit the brakes and live righteously based on the grace of God on a daily basis, magiging second nature din po sa atin to live righteously. So now, Paul makes three important lessons why Christians should not live in sin with the illustration of slavery. Sabi sa verse 16, Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin which leads to death or of obedience which leads to righteousness. So the first lesson that we can learn is the position of slavery. We are slaves to whomever we obey, either we are slaves of sin or slaves of obedience to God. Ito pong imagery of slavery are very familiar to the first century Christians in Rome to whom Paul wrote this letter. Ang slavery po kasi played a big part in the culture of Rome dahil po they performed much of the labor and hard work that helped build the Roman Empire. And during this time, it was also believed that there were millions of slaves in the Roman Empire. As many as one-third of the population were slaves. And historians even estimated that at least one-half of the Roman church uh, were, were or had been slaves. Kaya nga po, ang slavery was that common to everyday life. Kapag naisip po natin yung slavery, we think of people who were taken captured as spoils of war and were forced to become slaves. But many who become slaves, uh, and this might surprise you, actually sold themselves into slavery because uh, they are in debt or they are unable to provide for themselves. And this is what it means when Paul said, or when Paul used the phrase, present yourselves. It has the idea of voluntarily subjecting oneself to someone more powerful, which was common in the first century. So to present yourself is to surrender yourself up completely to fulfill the desire of their master. Nagkaroon na po ba kayo ng classmate na laging nagpre-presenta kung may inuuto si teacher, kung mayroong bubuhatin, kung tuwing may recitation, or gagawing school project, o kaya laging involved sa lahat ng mga school programs. And this is what it looks like to present yourself, to give yourself completely to someone. So, uh, kung titignan po natin yung salitang slave in Greek, it is translated as doulos. It means one who gives himself up completely to a master. And yung slave po is different from a servant. 
Dahil po ang slave is much lower than a servant. Yung servant po kasi, they, uh, they still had some degree of freedom. Pwede silang tumanggap or umayaw sa trabaho, pwede siyang magkaroon ng property, makatanggap ng sweldo, at makauwi sa kanyang bahay. But a slave is owned by someone else. He had no independence, no self-autonomy, and no personal rights. In fact, former criminals had more rights than slaves. The reality is all of us are somebody's slaves. May iba ayaw magpasakop kay Cristo because uh, they don't want to give up their freedom. Hindi na nila magagawa kung ano ang gusto nilang gawin. But in fact, they are already enslaved by sin. And we may think we are calling the shots. We may think that uh, we are doing what we want to do. But we are controlled by one or the other of these two masters, either sin or God. Sinasabi sa atin ng Bible, a person is a slave to whom he chooses to obey. Bago po tayo naging Christian, wala po tayong choice kundi to obey sin. We are forced to obey sin because that was our nature. Kahit po gumagawa po tayo ng mga mabubuting bagay, our good works are still tainted with evil. Kasi po sabi po sa Bible, all our righteous acts are, are like filthy rags. But Christ has already freed us from sin and gave us a new nature. As believers, uh, alam na po natin that sin is no longer a habit to us. We also know that sin is no longer a lifestyle to us. But it has become a choice to a person who has experienced the resurrection power of God. Kung dati, wala nang isip-isip kung magmumura ba tayo o hindi, wala nang isip-isip if we will commit immorality or not, now, we can choose between obeying sin or obeying God. The master we obey reveals whose slaves we are. Sabi nga po ni Martin Luther, uh, You're either God's donkey or the devil's donkey. But make no mistake, you are a donkey and you will be ridden either by God or by the devil. And kung tutuloy po natin sa verse 17, sinabi po ni Paul, But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. So makita po natin, Paul burst into thanksgiving when those in Rome and all who make up the church had a change of masters and were no longer slaves to sin, but slaves to righteousness. The radical change began with hearing a standard of teaching which refers to the gospel truth. Kumbaga, they believed the good news that God became man in Jesus Christ who lived and died for man's sin. And through his resurrection, he proved he is the Son of God and offers forgiveness and salvation to those who repent and believe. They committed themselves to the truth that was given to them and became obedient to the word of God wholeheartedly. And Paul said, they have became obedient from the heart. Kung titignan po natin yung job description po ng isang slave, uh, it is simply to obey, period. Yun lang po yung job description niya. But there are slaves who obey, but they do not do so from their hearts. Diba when you hate your boss to the core tapos may pinapagawa sa iyo, you do it merely to conform externally. But not so for these Roman believers. By His grace, they had obeyed from their hearts with deep sincerity and conviction for they had been freed from sin and now have become slaves of righteousness. Now, ngayon, to be free from sin means that sin is no longer our boss. Sin is no longer our master. Righteousness became our boss. So we are to serve righteousness instead of sin. Halimbawa po, uh, uh, you, nag-change po kayo ng company. Okay? Uh, Siyempre, kapag nag-change ka ng company, uh, uh, nag-change ka rin ng boss. And on your first day in, in your new company, Umalis ka sa trabaho mo, you went to your former employer and asked your former boss, what do you want me to do, boss? Di ba, hindi naman tama yun dahil meron ka ng new position, meron ka ng bagong boss. So bakit ka pa babalik sa dati mong employer kung meron ka ng bagong boss? Di ba? So, now, 
titingnan natin that Paul shifts the focus from position, diba? from being slaves to sin, uh, to righteousness, uh, and now he he focus on focuses on the practice, as we will read in verse 19. It says, I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations, for just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness. So now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. So the second lesson that we can learn is the practice of slavery. We are willing participants of either lawlessness or sanctification. Now, the idea of being a slave of God may not sound pleasant. Hindi, ma, hindi po maganda paki, pakinggan no? uh, pagka sinabi natin slave of God. But Paul made it clear that he is speaking in human terms. Ibig sabihin po nito, this metaphor is not exactly a perfect illustration. Uh, dahil po, alam po ni Paul, there are certain aspects of slavery like cruelty, humiliation, and fear that he would not want to attribute to God. He's simply saying it is just a human way to describe one aspect of our relationship with God. Tandaan po natin, the Bible uses several ways to describe our relationship with Him. He described our relationship with Him as friend, as children, as sheep. And in this particular case, He used the term slave so that it will make sense to the Romans for them to better understand and emphasize the importance of obeying God. So dito po, Paul seeks to show how the lifestyle of a person corresponds to who their master is. In short, we live and act according to who our master is. Sabi po sa scripture, they formerly presented their members as slaves to impurity and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness. Ano po bang ibig sabihin ng impurity and lawlessness? That is a description of what we are and what we did bago po tayo na save. But unfortunately, there are Christians who continue to live impure and lawless lives. Impurity refers to all types of sexual sins such as premarital sex, adultery, rape, homosexual acts, and other sexual deviations. Kapag patuloy po po tayong uh, namumuhay uh, sa kasalanan, we are enslaved to impurity, we are defiling our own bodies. Sabi sa 1 Corinthians 6, 18-20, Flee immorality, every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not of your own, for you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. So the human body was actually designed to serve and worship God, and it need not be defiled. Ngayon, tignan, tignan naman natin yung word na lawlessness. So lawlessness is the refusal to acknowledge and submit to God's sovereign right of rulership. Lawless people have no regard for the law, and it leaves man without absolute moral guidance. Kumbaga, complete disregard for the law. Uh, for example, alam po, meron po tayong batas or ordinance uh, na kapag uh, lalabas, kailangan magsuot ng, ng mask. So may mga lumalabag po sa ordinance na to. May mga iba who are not exercising so social distancing. Uh, they show complete disregard uh, sa batas. And gusto ko rin po maintindihan po natin, when we continue to present our bodies to lawlessness, we are not just violating God's law, but it also means we are abolishing the law as if the law does not exist. Para po nagde-declare po tayo ng rebellion against God outrightly. Maga we are uh, telling God in your face, ito yung law, ito yung mga commands mo, God. Uh, I will completely disregard it as if it doesn't exist. So when we give ourselves to impurity and lawlessness, 
hindi po nasasatisfy yung mga needs po natin. It only made us crave for more and the tendency for us is to commit worse and worse sins. Malibawa na lang po, if we feed our lust with a little bit of pornography, it is like pouring gas sa nagliliyab na apoy. Instead of extinguishing it, lalo siyang liliyab at kakalat. Di ba po kapag nag, uh, sisinungaling po tayo, yung isang kasinungalingan, mga nganap ng isa pang kasinungalingan. And before you know it, it will become out of hand and it makes it difficult for you to come clean. And this is what it means when we say, Lawlessness leads to more lawlessness. You know, a few months ago, uh, we saw what happened in the U.S. where an African-American was killed by a white police officer and sparked massive protests across the country. Ito po mga protests na to regressed into lawlessness. They, it caused riots, injuries, vandalism, even looting, fires, and destruction of proper properties. And nagsimula lang po ito sa isang act of lawlessness. And that is the death of George Floyd, which led to more lawlessness. So the life of sin leads us to further sin. Para po siyang cancer that grows until it's spread to other organs that can lead to death. On the other hand, Paul commands those in Christ to also present themselves as slaves of righteousness. The same way they formerly presented themselves as slaves of impurity and lawlessness. Sabi ni Paul, So now, present your members as slaves to righteousness. Kumbaga, Paul is saying to the Roman believers to make this their top priority. They are to present their bodies to righteousness and they are to do it now. So what does it mean to present ourselves as slaves to righteousness? It means that the life we now live, we are to live for God. His will matters to us more than our own will, and we are committed to obey His commands. Every aspect of our lives must be, must be presented to the Lordship of Christ. And ito pong life of surrender and obedience will lead us to our sanctification. Kapag sinabi po nating sanctification, it comes from the same root word as holy and saint. It means to be separated from sin and set apart unto holiness. And sanctification is a work of God's grace in our lives. And we participate in that work by continually turning away from sin and demonstrating our faith in Christ by obeying His commands. Kapag sinabi po nating sanctification para po siyang renovation project, meron po tayong uh, sinisirang mga old structure and mga tinatayong new ones. And uh, even though that we are, know that we are dead to sin, it doesn't mean that we will never be tempted by sin. Hindi po ibig sabihin ito that we will be immune to sinning. But when we do obey uh, sin's evil desires, Makaka-experience po tayo ng conviction from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit po enables us to hate uh, and despise sin and brings us to repentance and seek God's deliverance from it. And that is why ang sanctification po is not just a one-time event. It is a process that takes place in a Christian's life of becoming more and more like Christ. From the moment we were born again, until the moment we enter heaven. And as we continually submit ourselves to righteousness, we are set apart for God's purposes and pursue growing in godliness so that we will reflect Christ more in our lives. So whichever side you are, wala po ta, kumbaga, uh, no one will remain morally neutral. It's either you will be slipping back into more sin or overcoming sin towards sanctification. So a while ago, we talked about the position of slavery, the practice of slavery. Now we're going to talk about the fruit of slavery. The fruit of our allegiance is either death or eternal life. Sabi sa verse 20, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time from the things of which you are now ashamed of? For the end of those things is death. 
But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Taiba, we are free to choose between two masters, but we are not free to manipulate the consequences of our choice. And each of the two masters bore different fruits. The fruit of slavery to sin is death. Kala po natin para lang po to sa mga unbelievers, pero even in the life of a believer, it applies. When we choose to be slaves uh, to sin, we are bringing death to fellowship with God. It brings death to our joyful relationship with God. Kasi hindi na po natin na enjoy yung presence ni God when we're living in sin because of shame and guilt. Pangalawa, we bring death to relationships. Nakikita po natin uh, uh, mga broken marriages, ruined friendships, and relational discord. They are always the result of somebody's sinful attitudes and actions. And lastly, uh, it brings physical death. When we indulge in uh, sin, some Christians are killing themselves with anger, bitterness. Uh, they are killing themselves with extreme worry. Some have even contracted fatal diseases because of sexual promiscuity. While others, they are destroying their bodies by abusing themselves through alcohol or, or tobacco or even other prohibited substances. Ngayon, bakit po tayo magstay in a slavery that promises nothing but death? No, those who do so uh, are foolish. On the other hand, uh, the fruit of slavery to God is eternal life. And in this particular verse, eternal life refers to our glorification. This is the final aspect of our salvation when we will stand faultless in the presence of God. And in that moment, what remains of our sin will be erased. Only our new man will remain. And then in verse 23, Paul summarizes the end results of each of the two slaveries. Uh, una, ginamit niya ar agricultural metaphor, which is the fruit. And now he's using a financial metaphor, which is wages. Because I for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Kung titignan natin yung word na wages, this is used for a Roman soldier's pay. It is something that he has earned, uh, he has worked for, and nobody could deny it from him. And in the same way, tayo rin po, we deserve our wages because of sin. And pansinin po natin yung word na sin, it is in a singular form. That means one sin alone, we will be eternally separated from God in hell. Kahit po kinoconsider po natin yung sarili natin na mabait na tao tayo, pero if we commit, just let's say if we commit one sin a day and in a year, well, we have committed 365 sins, multiply, multiply that by your age, then we are more than uh, deserving to receive our wages, which is death. And fortunately, uh, God is offering us a gift. Kapag sinabi po natin regalo, if this is something that we cannot earn, something that we cannot buy by our good works or religiosity or any other means that man can do. Itong regalo na to, it is freely given. Pusang loob siyang ibinibigay and it doesn't cost us anything because someone has already paid for it. Nothing in life comes free. Diba? Parang laging may nagbabayad nun uh, for it to be free. And uh, para Para masabi ito ito isang regalo, kailangan din to tanggapin. It must be received. So God is offering us this gift of eternal life. He paid the ultimate price for our salvation by dying on the cross. And we can receive this gift by putting our faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. And as I close, tayo we are currently facing a health crisis because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Because of the virus, lives were lost, economies struggled, uh, and faith were even tested. And the virus is actually a living organism. Kailangan po nito ng host para makapag-survive so that it could inflict widespread infection and damage sa ating mga vital organs. 
And tanggalin natin yung uh, host and this virus remains dormant and eventually it will die uh, by itself. So in a similar way, ganun din po mag-work yung sim. Ang sim po nakangailangan po siya ng host to stay alive. So by themselves, sins such as greed, anger, lust, they are just mere words. But when sin enters a human host, it, it, it works to destroy as long as the host is alive. Thankfully, dahil po sa sacrificial death ni Jesus Christ on that cross, uh, tayo po mga Kristiyano have been positionally freed uh, from sin. We have been set free from sin. And even though uh, we still sin, the Holy Spirit who lives in us uh, helps us to resist this sin virus, leading us to practice righteous living. And now, we are walking with God, walking with the Spirit, and one day we will stand faultless before God, receiving the fruit of being slaves of God, which is eternal life. So now we are uh, presented with a choice. Uh, when we are confronted with a question, whose slave are you? Uh, will you make the right choice? Will you choose being a slave to sin or being a slave to God? So make the right choice and live your life voluntarily yet radically as a slave to Jesus Christ because uh, being a slave to Christ is far more blessed and rewarding than any other uh, thing in this world. So let me just end uh, by, by praying for all of us. Uh, Lord, marami salamat for the word that we have heard today. And I pray, Father, that you will bless each and every one of us, especially those brothers in Christ who are struggling with sin, uh, uh, believers who are having a hard time overcoming uh, a particular area in their life. Na para bang paulit-ulit na lang, it's been a cycle and, uh, and they're going round in circles. And I pray, Father, that just as you have uh, given them, Lord, the power, Lord, to, to break bondages, I pray, Lord, that they will be able, Lord, to say no to ungodliness and yes to righteousness. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will move in their lives, that you will bring a strong, conviction that they will despise sin, they will hate sin, and uh, it will lead them to repent and it will cause them, Lord, to uh, desire uh, for uh, holy dissatisfaction uh, and they will seek you and, and, and uh, honor you with their lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And if this is uh, your first time and you haven't uh, actually received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, hindi mo pa na-represent yung sarili mo uh, as a slave uh, of God. And I want us to be, I want to give you an opportunity uh, to make that choice, to surrender yourself under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Just as we have heard a while ago, the parang God is offering us a free gift, uh, a gift of eternal life through faith in Christ. And if that is you, uh, kindly follow this prayer with me. Uh, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, that I am in need of a Savior. And here I am today, presenting myself, presenting my body, my heart, and my mind uh, to be a slave of God. To sur I surrender my will under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I accept Him and receive Him as my Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. And if that is you and you sincerely pray that prayer, kindly do message us. We want to connect with you and get in touch with you and share with you uh, what's the next step and how you can grow in your decision uh, in following Christ. So let me just uh, pray a prayer of blessing for all of us. Lord, maraming salamat, God. Uh, and I pray, Father, that you will bless each and every one of us uh, tremendously, that you will pour out your Spirit so that we will be able, Lord God, to honor you with our mind, with our heart, with our lips, with our hands. And Lord, we thank you 
uh, for the blessing, for the gift of eternal life that you have placed upon every believer today. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you everyone and have a great week ahead.